Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Easter. Come on in. Stand up with us as we begin our day of worship together. Majesty, worship His majesty. Unto Jesus be our glory, honor, and praise.
He is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. Uh, welcome this morning. We are so glad that you are here. Uh, what a blessing to be able to gather on this Easter Sunday and praise the one who got up from the grave. And uh, today we do just that. If you're a guest of ours, uh, we are ex especially glad that you have come our way. Uh, thankful that you are here. want to encourage you. Just take a moment. Let us know that you're here. Pull out one of those guest cards in the pew rack in front of you and we'll ask that you'll fill that out and on the back there's a place for any prayer concerns or requests that you have this is a church that believes in the power of prayer and we, we just want to uh, invite you to partner with us in prayer and so you can put that little card in the contribution basket when it comes around a little bit later in the service uh, if you're a member here or if you worship regularly somewhere else uh, we're glad that you're here this morning uh, and we're thankful that we can all join together. Today we are going to uh, experience the, the resurrected Savior. Uh, sometimes we're going to, to be singing. Sometimes we may just be listening. We're going to open up the Word and see what God has to share with us today. And so I just want to invite you to, 
to take a moment and pause and, and recognize the gift that we have today to do just that. We have several of our number away, about 50 uh, of our folks, kiddos and parents and families are away in Nashville at Lads to Leaders. Uh, please be praying for their safe return this afternoon as they come back to us. I heard they're just having a, a great weekend. Uh, you've probably noticed a lot of the uh, children's bulletins that are, were out coming in. I hope all of our kiddos got one of those on the way in because we are not dismissing for children's worship today. All of our children will be staying in here with us today, and it's great to have our kiddos. So if you want to pull out your children's bulletin and uh, start working in on that, uh, please, please do that. You probably noticed all of the 24 signs that have been up around. There's, there's one back here on the stage, and there's one down by the, the entrance. And, and today, we're kicking off a new series entitled 24. And uh, you just saw the video and kind of the semblance to the 24 TV show a little bit, but uh, we are going to be exploring the Gospel of Luke. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the Gospel of Luke has 24 chapters. And so we're going to start with chapter 24 today, and we're going to work our way backwards for 24 weeks and go through every chapter of the book of Luke. We're going to look at the words of Jesus. We're going to look at what he said, what he did. We're going to investigate this man who is God. And so I want to invite you on a journey uh, these next several weeks. Uh, we're going to kick off with chapter 24 today, and then we're going to jump back in with chapter 23 in May. And uh, so please, uh, if you're a guest of ours, we want to invite you to come back and be a part of that. Let's pause for just a moment and reflect on the gifts of this day and go to God in prayer. Father, we praise you today. We thank you that you are a God of mercy and grace. God, we're thankful that that tomb was found empty. God, we're sorry that our sins put Jesus on the cross. But out of your great love, you paved a way for us to come back into relationship with you. And as we explore that reality today, Father, may... May you meet us where we're at. Father, I look across this room, I see a lot of new faces. And I know with each one of those faces comes a story. And so God, I pray that uh, your story will intersect with our stories today and that we will be drawn to the reality of who you are. And Father, who you have made us and the reality of our, our gift to, to explore this life and be a Christ follower. And so God, today I just pray that in all things you're glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you, please be turning to Luke chapter 24. It's in your New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, we're going to be looking in, in this great book for the next several weeks, like I said. And, and one of the things that I want us to do is recognize a little bit of the context because working backwards is a little challenging but part of the context is this is that that Jesus has just been crucified and he's just been buried and pick up with me in chapter 24 starting in verse 1 and let's read what the word says it's on the first day of the week very early in the morning the women took the spices they had prepared and they went to the tomb the tomb that Jesus was buried at they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Look at verse 3 says, but, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Let's keep going in verse 4. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Now, I, I want you to catch this picture. This is not just a couple guys showed up and we thought, oh, oh yeah, that, I mean, have you ever been in a, in a lightning storm? Have you ever seen lightning come crashing down? Uh, just, just about a week or so ago, we had a, a pretty significant storm, and, or a couple weeks ago, and, and it was just all night, just this lightning. I mean, this is the picture of, of what these women experienced. Look, while they were wondering, in their, uh, verse 5, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? 
He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Last night I went up to our daughter's room, Sadie. She's two years old, and we were going to have our prayer time. And I went up there, and and a lot of times we'll, we'll actually will kneel next to one another on the same side of the bed, but... She had a, a bright idea last night. She said, why don't, she said, Daddy, why don't you get on that side of the bed, and I'll get on this side of the bed, and, and we'll reach over and we'll hold each other's hands during the prayer. And I thought, great, that, that works great. All right, so, so we're, we're reaching over, we're holding each other's hands across the bed, and we're praying, and we're thanking God for, for Mommy and Daddy and, and uh, uh, Grady, and, and we're thanking God for Elsa and Anna and and, you know, all the, you know, everybody, my nose, my feet, and say, he said, you know, thank you for my heels, you know, because you've got to have good heels. And so, and so we're thanking God for all of this. And then all of a sudden, I said, I said, God, and thank you that Jesus died on the cross. And I paused, two-year-old. I paused, and, and I, I looked up at Sadie, and she was, she was looking at me, and I, I said, I said, now, now say, do you know that, that Jesus rose from the dead? And she, she's sitting there across from the bed, and she, she breaks our, our clasp with our hands, and she gets up, and she crawls across the bed, and she gets right up in my face, right up in my face, and she says, what? And I was like, Jesus, Jesus, he rose. From, from the grave, she said, okay. And she went back, went, went back across, you know, to the other side of the bed and was, and was sitting there again. And, and I think th- this is kind of the picture that we see here in Luke 24. It's like, the women are like, what? And, and they, they had to be reminded. And isn't it interesting that, that before the women could accept that Jesus had risen, that they had to first be reminded of Jesus' words. Did you catch that? And when they told the 11 disciples, isn't it curious that the majority of the disciples, you go on, if you look in a few later verses, they tell the other disciples, and isn't it curious that, that most of the other disciples say, say, well, that doesn't make any sense. They, they kind of have that question in their mind, why even bother? Ever been there? Ever ask that question in your own life? Why bother? My marriage has been struggling for years. She keeps doing this. He keeps doing that. She, he, he, she, she. Why even bother? My job is just, just horrible. My boss keeps doing this. My coworkers keep doing that. My patients keep doing this. My pa- Why even bother? Why bother? You ever ask that question in your own life? I'll confess to you this morning. There's sometimes, there's sometimes even as a preacher, when I, when I think about folks that, that, that hear the words that come out of my mouth and then they go out in the parking lot and forget everything I said, I think, why even bother? Why even bother? But the Bible says that Peter, says that Peter ran to the tomb. And can you imagine the guilt that was in Peter's mind? He had just denied the Lord Jesus three times. No, I don't know him. Jesus, no, I'm not with Jesus. No, no, not, not three. Jesus runs to us. and Peter runs to the tomb. And here's the reality, folks, is that the resurrection dares to tell us things that we didn't expect. Things that we aren't inclined to really even believe. The resurrection tells us and dares us to believe things that we can't even understand. 
But before we can understand the words of Jesus, we have to first open our hearts to listen. Join us as the praise team leads us in worship. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart.
countdown, let's look at verse 13 in chapter 24. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? Now this has to be one of the the best scenes that Luke sketches. I mean, can you imagine and not even recognizing Jesus and how he just kind of plays along with this whole scenario? I remember being at a men's retreat a few years ago, and the way that the setup was is there was about eight of us men around the table, and that there was different ones of us that would get up and speak, and I was one of the speakers. And the way that we did it is we would get up and we would go and actually change clothes before we spoke. We would get out of our normal clothes and we would put on a suit and then we would speak. And so I got up and I put on a suit and I came back and I spoke. And, and then I finished and I went and changed my clothes again and I came back and sat down. And I was sitting next to a table of eight men and I was sitting next to an older gentleman. And he looked over me and, and he said, I said, man, that guy was good. <laughs> and, I, and I looked in his, I looked at him, and I, and I realized that he wasn't joking. Like, he, he really did not know that I was the one that was up there speaking. And so, so I, I thought I would play along a little bit. So I, I said, uh, I said, really? I hate I missed that. I said, what did he say? And he started telling me all the stuff that I had had said. He said, oh, well, he, he talked about this, and he talked about that. And I was like, I was like, no kidding. I mean, that is, this guy must be really good. And about, about this time, the other guys around the table recognize what is happening, and they, they recognize that he had no idea that I was the one that was up there speaking just, you know, a few minutes earlier. And they finally, they break the news to him, and, the, and they say, you know, hey, Jimmy, look, look, that was Brett that was up there. And he was like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, that was me that was, that was up there. And and it's so hard for us to imagine this in this story. That this is what happened. They don't recognize Jesus. They don't recognize him. And he's walking along with them. And I love, I love how Jesus plays along. Look at, uh, look at after verse 27, starting in verse 27. Look at this. So, and beginning with Moses, here's what Jesus did. They, they said, you know, Jesus, you know, he's been crucified and, and he's dead. We wish he was alive, but he's dead. We went to the funeral, all this. And then, and then here's what Jesus does. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And here's what's really important. That this is how Jesus taught the Bible. That there is, there's a lot of things in the Bible. There is, there's morality. But the Bible is not primarily about morality. There's, there's good things, there's miracles in the Bible, there's good things, but the Bible's not, pri- the Bible, the Word of God is primarily about Jesus. And he tells them, th- it's all pointing, it's all pointing to me. This whole book is about, it's about me. And he starts, he says, you know, in Genesis, I'm there. In Exodus, that's me. Leviticus, me again. Numbers, I'm there. Deuteronomy, that's me. And he tells them, this whole thing is pointing to me. This whole thing is about Jesus. The Bible is not primarily about you. The Bible is not primarily about me. The Bible is not primarily about us. The Word of God is about the living Word, Jesus. That's what it's about. And he tells them this, and he he paints this picture of that. And, And look at verse 28. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Verse 30. 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. What's the first thing that Jesus does when he rises from the dead? What's the first thing that Jesus does when he rises from the dead? He teaches the Bible and he starts a connect group. Now, connect groups are our small group ministry here at Homewood, and they didn't call them connect groups back then, but, but that's what Jesus does. And that's why you know, the primary mission of who we are here at Homewood is that we open the Word. We see that the, the Word points to Jesus over and over again. And that's one of our first priorities. We break bread together. And then we built a friendship. And look at verse 31. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. And so folks, here's, get, get this. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. God opens our eyes so that we can see Jesus as Lord, so that we can see Jesus as King, so that we can see Jesus as Savior, so that we can see Jesus as Christ. So if you have family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, enemies, and they don't see Jesus for who He is, don't get mad at them. Pray for them. Keep teaching. Keep opening up the Scriptures. Because they're not stupid. They're blind. None of us would go up to a blind person and say, Hey, you don't see this? I mean, that, that's flat out mean. It's really mean. Now, we would not do that. In the same way, God has to open our eyes. God has to open our eyes and three things that we see here, I want you to write these down if you're a write-down-things kind of person. And then your worship guy, there's a little place for you to make some notes. I want you to write these three things down that we see here. Number one is that Jesus rose from the dead, literally. Jesus rose from the dead, literally. Number two... We are spiritually blind until God opens our eyes. We are spiritually blind until God opens our eyes. And then the third thing is this. It is through the teaching of the Word of God that blind eyes are open. It is through the teaching of the Word of God that blind eyes are open. This morning, I want to invite us, as the praise team leads us, to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the See you high and lift 
gather to take a meal. It's a simple meal. It's a piece of unleavened bread and a cup of grape juice. But I want you to think back to the first meal of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, the woman took some of the fruit and ate it. She gave it to her husband and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. And death itself is traced back to this moment of rebellion. And now Luke, echoing that story, describes the first meal of the new creation. In verse 30 and 31, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him. The couple at Emmaus dis- discovered that the long curse has been broken. And death itself has been defeated. That God's creation, brimming with life and joy and new possibility, has burst upon the world of decay and sorrow. And Jesus himself risen from the dead is the beginning and the sign of this new world look with me in verse 32 they asked each other were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together And saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I want to ask you today as as you receive the bread this morning, that you will hold on to it. Just hold it in your hand for a moment. And reflect on the fact that because of Jesus, death has been defeated. And then after all of us have been served, we will partake of the bread together. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to eat and to drink of the body and the blood of Jesus. Father, as we pass the bread this morning, Father, may we give pause and reflect and remember Jesus' words. Do this in memory of me. Father, may we truly remember this morning this great sacrifice on our behalf. And may we take this bread in a way that proclaims his death, his burial, and his resurrection until he comes again. In Jesus we pray, amen.
Let's remember Jesus. Take and eat. And as we take the cup, let's again hold it and reflect on the sacrifice of Jesus. And after everyone has been served, we will take it together as one body. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that saves us, the blood that redeems us, the blood that makes us whole, the blood that makes all things new. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Father, as we remember that sacrifice right now, Father, may we rejoice in the fact that the same Jesus who bled and died is the same Jesus who got up and walked out of the grave. And we're so thankful that the tomb is empty. And so we celebrate his resurrection this morning. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's remember Jesus. Take and drink. Amen. If you are a guest of ours, as we enter into this time of giving, please know that there is no expectation for you to give this morning. We will ask that if you filled out one of those guest cards, that you'll put it in the plate as it comes around. We'd love to have a record of your attendance. This is an opportunity for the faith family here at Homewood to experience worship through giving. Let's pray. Father, you are a God who gave. You gave us so much. And Father, I pray that today as we worship you through this act of giving, Father, that you will remind us just how wonderfully made we are in your image. And God, as we give, may we do so cheerfully. May we do so with hearts that are bent toward a life that is focused on being rich toward you. And so, Father, thank you for this opportunity that we get to give. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to the table and worship the Savior. Taste what forgiveness is for. His mercy will lead us, the grace of God feed us, making us hungry for more. His body was given for you and for me. Look on the cross and believe. The bread has been broken. Our eyes have been opened. Restore and renew The word has been spoken So humble and broken We do all in remembrance of you The bread has been broken And all those who know him Believe without touching the scars His death reconciled us 
We live sanctified to become what we already are. To Him who loves us and freed us to love, be glory and honor and praise. The bread has been broken, our eyes have been opened. Oh, come, Lord, restore and renew. The word has been spoken, so humbled and broken. We do all in remembrance of you. The bread has been broken. Restore and renew, the word has been spoken, so humble and broken, we do all in remembrance of you, the bread has been Jesus, he opens our hearts. Jesus opens our eyes. And finally this morning, we're going to see that the resurrection power of Jesus opens up our minds as well. Look with me in Luke 24, starting in verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And you have to assume in this moment that the disciples' minds are reeling. I mean, they are absolutely reeling. I mean, it, it, it makes me think, and this is, this is a horrible analogy. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that up front. But it's one that will stick with you. That's, that's my job as a communicator, to make sure it sticks. So this is this one that stick with you. But we have a two, two-week-old baby, and it's a boy. And I'm here to tell you, changing boy diapers is different than changing girl diapers. All right? That's just the reality. All right? And my mind just starts reeling sometimes when I've got this little eight pound thing in front of me and he is just every which way all right and, and it just it just blows it blows my mind and and I told you it was horrible I told you y'all, y'all didn't believe me it was horrible and just as much as my mind has been blown by having this newborn baby in our house I can't imagine the disciples minds and how blown their minds were at what they just saw, at what has just happened, at what has just occurred, as they're reflecting on all of this. And they say, what is the point of Jesus dying and rising again? What's the point? And the answer is here in a few sentences. Look with me in verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these great things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. These two words, repentance and and forgiveness are not just two words for us as individuals. These are two words 
that are the agenda for changing the world. These two words, repentance and forgiveness. And Jesus promised his followers, he promised them that they would be equipped from power, from where? Upon high. My friends, if you don't get anything else today, get this. Easter is not a day. Easter is a life. Easter is a life. It is a lifelong pursuit of God because of the power we have received through his spirit by what Jesus Christ has done. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives within each of us. I want to invite the praise team singers to come back on stage at this time and I want you to continue following along with me in your Bibles in verse 50 and reflect on these words with me that when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany he lifted up his hands and blessed them and while he was blessing them he left them and was taking up into heaven then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Here we see Luke's gospel ends in the same place it began. It ends in the temple, but it's not about the temple because we, we read in Scripture that the temple is now our bodies and the Spirit lives within us. But worship of the living God revealed through Jesus of Nazareth is at the heart of Luke's vision for a Christian life. Amen? And that's the reality that we celebrate this morning. So before we close, let's open our hearts. Let's open our eyes. Let's open our minds. Let's worship. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? No. 
never said why bother and while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and this is the good news that while you were still doing that thing that you don't tell anybody about Christ died for us it's good news a lot of times in church we've heard this well, if you'll just go away and kind of get yourself cleaned up and start behaving right and, and do all the, the good things, that, and, and here's what you don't do, and then here's what you do do, and then, and then don't say do do right next to each other, but that's what you do. And, and, and when you get to this point, and then we reflect on what the Word of God says, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so if you're here this morning and you're not perfect, uh, join, the, join the crowd. This is a church of imperfect people, but we serve a perfect, risen Savior. And for that, we say amen. Folks, death surrendered to Jesus. And our hope and our prayer this morning is that you will too. So whatever is going on in your life, if you want to give your life to Jesus today, we would love to celebrate that with you. There's nothing more important that we would rather do before we leave this place. If you need prayers of one of the shepherds of this church, that's what they do. They love to stand beside you and pray and lift up your concerns. And there will be a shepherd down front as we sing this next song. And there will also be shepherds back here in this room behind you in room 113 if you want a more private setting you can go back there and pray with one of our shepherds and their wives whatever your need is recognize this remember this may this be the takeaway that Jesus Christ alone saves that's the invitation the invitation is to him because it's all about him this morning if you have a need this morning, we want to encourage you and walk alongside you. Will you come and sing this song? In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love!
Easter. We hope that you will come back and visit us again next Sunday. We'll have another great day of worship. We're going to close out with a song we're very excited about doing. We've been looking forward to this all week, and uh, we think that you hopefully will enjoy it. Sing along. The words are going to be on the screen. It's not very hard. It repeats itself a lot, like a lot of songs, but I think you'll uh, find it will be really a great, great way to close out our day. Because the words are, He is alive forever. Amen? Amen. Here we go. Let the children sing the song of liberation. The God of our salvation set us free. Death, where is thy sting? The curse of sin is broken. The empty tomb stands open. Come and see. Worthy is the mighty king is alive.
alive, 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 and hallelujah, alive. Have a blessed Easter. Let's focus with a prayer. God, thank you for being with us this day. Thank you for bringing your Holy Spirit into this room and settling on all of us and letting us just have a great day of worship to you. Thank you for your risen Son. Thank you for what he means to us. And may we, we be safe as we leave and come back again next week. And we all say together, Amen. Happy Easter. <laughs>